Thank you so much for joining us for the program today, Faith for Every Nation. Today you're going to get to hear my dad speak about faith, holding fast to your confession of faith. So if you need to hear more about that, I encourage you to tune in, keep listening, keep watching. It is going to help you in your faith and it's going to encourage you to hold fast to your confession of faith. Let's get right into the message. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Open your Bible, 2 Corinthians 4, 13. Guess what we're studying? We're still studying the spirit of faith. <laughs> I said, we're still studying the spirit of faith. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And Paul said, that's what we have. We have, that's what we have. We're not trying to get it. Not someday going to get it. He said, we got it. And if you got it, there's nothing wrong with saying you got it. Matter of fact, once you got this, you can get anywhere from there. We have, we having the same identical, we have the same identical. Here he uses the word spirit of faith. Spirit of faith. I like that phrase spirit of faith because you can see that the spirit of faith is more than just a formula. Even though there are exact steps of faith, and there is a formula of faith because that's the way faith works, but the spirit of faith is a little bit more than just a formula. Spirit of faith will make you grab a corn stalk, swing out over hell, and spit in the devil's eye. Yes. <laughs> you see the spirit of faith at Kenneth Copeland Ministries here in uh, Kenneth and Gloria, that spirit of faith uh, just keeps them going forward, even at uh, 84 years old, and he's young, headed for 120. Uh, <laughs> he still amazes me, like, by the spirit of faith. So every time I get around Brother Copeland, I'm like, whoo, praise the Lord. I need to raise my expectation up a couple notches. Amen. So the Apostle Paul said, that's what we have. Actually, I actually have a, a pastor friend, pastors in Nashville, Tennessee, great pastor, uh, pastor Charles Cowan. He's a great pastor, great friend of ours for years. And so uh, he said many years ago, first time he went to hear Brother Copeland, and he was raised in church, Pentecostal church, you know, and he went to hear Brother Copeland, and he said, he sat there and heard Brother Copeland, and he kind of he started getting critical of him because he said it just seemed like he just, just uh, uh, a little bit on the arrogant side. So he said, I'm just getting up and leaving. And he said, the Lord told him, sit back down, pay attention, and he's going to teach you something. <laughs> so instead of getting up and leaving, he went ahead and stayed there. And the spirit of faith really changed his life. And he ended up going to Rama, and uh, now pastoring a great church in Nashville, Tennessee. So um, some time ago, I saw Brother Copeland. I said, you know, Brother Charles Cowan. And I, and I said, the first time he heard you, then he felt like you were you know, a little too uh, confident, maybe arrogant. And uh, Brother Copeland said, well, that's because he never heard anybody with a spirit of faith. <laughs> well, it's sure good not to have a spirit of fear, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Uh, we've been delivered from the spirit of fear, and now you and I have a spirit of faith. Amen. And so the spirit of faith, he says, has two ingredients. He said, I believe and therefore I speak. And he says, according as, as it is written, and he's quoting from the psalmist David. So how many think David has spirit of faith? Well, the spirit of faith killed a lion, killed a bear, killed a giant. <laughs> Amazing. He made it in Hebrews 11 even though he did have some challenges. So that means there's no such thing as what? 
unchallenged faith. <laughs> but he still made in Hebrews 11. And then David had 400 mighty men that when they came to him, they were distressed, discontent, and in debt. And when David got finished with them, they became what? David's mighty men. <laughs> Amen. And so there ought to be some people in your life that when you first met them, they were distressed, discontent, and in debt. But after they got and hung out with you for a while, the spirit of faith is contagious. Instead of you catching what they got, they caught what you got. Amen. As a pastor, you know, I used to think, Lord, why did you send me some people like this? <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord said, because you're going to make them mighty men. <laughs> In other words, David's spirit of faith contagious and his mighty men caught the same thing from him. So he said, that's what we have. We have the same spirit of faith. We believe and we speak. So you must be a believer and you must be a speaker. Amen. So while we're teaching on the spirit of faith last session, I had a lot of fun last session. I just had a lot of fun last night. So when you're talking about the spirit of faith, because we only have a couple more sessions, then we're going to go a little bit over here where you talk about faith in God, the ingredients in the spirit of faith, what Paul had and why he had it. In other words, with the spirit of faith, your boldness and your confidence can be so confident and so strong because your faith is in God. Amen. God, let's say it this way, you're the believer and God's the performer. Amen. So now we want to look at the different categories of faith and how it works. So Mark 11, 22 is to have faith in God. Then, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5, he says, so that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And there he's talking about the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. So Dad Hagen said it this way one time, I thought it was really interesting. He said, we talk about having faith in God. He said, have you ever considered having faith in the God that lives in you? All right, let's try that again. Have you considered having faith in the Spirit of God that lives in you? Amen. That your confidence and your faith is in the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, and He dwells in you. So instead of just thinking, I have faith in God, way off somewhere, have faith also add this ingredient, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So that means you have, I believe and I speak. I believe and I speak your confession of faith. So to have faith in the power of God, whoo, man, do you believe in the power of God? <laughs> well, I've seen some pretty great demonstrations of the power of God. And so sometimes a lot of people, they say, well, I have faith in God, but they really don't get a good picture of God's ability and his power. To have faith in God, you have faith in his power and his ability. Actually, I don't know if I have time to cover it, but there's nine, nine God is able nine specific scriptures that say God is able. Now, why would he say that? Actually, Jesus started off in Matthew when the blind man came to him. He said, do you believe I'm able to do this? That's interesting, isn't it? And Matthew 9, what is it, 28, 29? Do you believe I'm able to do this? He said, yes, Lord. And Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now, I know we say, well, we believe faith begins where the will of God is known, but there's something here about, do you believe 
that God is able to do this. In other words, your faith in God is going to take you beyond your ability into God's ability. All right, so there's nine scriptures. And so he said, yes, Lord. And Jesus said, according to your faith, <laughs> praise the Lord. I, I, for Dad Hagen, here's a couple of things he said. He said, you can actually only go as far as your faith will take you. What does that mean? Well, that means that the tribes that were going into the promised land, seven never went in or only got into the edge. Why? Because they just could only go as far as their faith had taken. So some people kind of just get up to the edge of the blessings of God and they never go in and possess it. Y'all still with me? So um, then Dad Hagen said this to a friend of mine because a friend of mine kept asking him questions and complaining. And Dad Hagen said to him, you know, a man gets what he believes for in life, nothing more and nothing less. So my friend was a young minister and he kept complaining to Dad Hagen about this and complaining about, you know, churches and complaining about meetings, complaining about money, he had to throw that in there. And so Dad Hagen would just stop him every once in a while and he would say, you know, a man gets what he believes for in life, nothing more and nothing less. So he went on complaining and talk about something else, complaining, you know, what you call like a mild complaining. I'm not sure exactly the influence of mild complaining, <laughs> strong complaining. But how many of you ever did a little mild complaining? Nobody in here. So he's doing like, you know, that's why I like to say the spirit of faith will take the whine out of your voice. So if the whine never leaves your voice, you really don't have or you're not yielding to the spirit of faith. As long as you got a little bit of whine, you're, when you, when you just don't know how that I've been through this, you know, no, I've been saying it, it's been a long time, I've been having this now. But, you know, I believe God. Well, everything else you said was true, but the last thing you said probably ain't right. In other words, <laughs> you go through all the whining, and then you want to throw in I believe God thing. Now, spirit of faith will take the whine out of your voice. It will take the victim out of your voice. Because you cannot be a victim when you have a spirit of faith. You can only be a victor. <laughs> this is the victory <laughs> that overcomes the world, even our faith. So this guy kind of had a little whine going on. And Dad Hagen would stop him every now and then and say, he'd say, you know, a man gets what he believes for in life, nothing more and nothing less. <laughs> And finally, my friend left and he said, I spent 45 minutes trying to get some answers from Dad Hagen. I'm not sure what I got. He said, but you know, he kept saying, you know, a man gets what he believes for in life, nothing more, nothing less. I said, that might be your answer right there. Because <laughs> a lot of times Dad Hagen, if you're talking to him, he'd just start telling stories and you're supposed to figure out what that story means to you. So don't look at anybody right now, but say, you know, a man gets what he believes for in life, nothing more and nothing less. <laughs> so Dad Hagen with Mark 11, 23 and 24, that whosoever shall say, you'll have whatsoever he saith. And then verse 24, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So when I first heard this, I thought, this is amazing. And then to look at the spirit of faith, I believe and I speak, and that spirit of faith will put a boldness and a confidence in your voice where Jesus said that we may boldly say, boldly say. In other words, he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And you boldly say what? Is this Bible school class? So Jesus said, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. So you can boldly say what? Ah, that's wrong. That's Jesus right. said, <laughs> Jesus said, I'll never leave you, never say it. You may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what any man shall do unto me. All right, let's try this out over here. In other words, he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. And you boldly say what? Now, I had, a, I had a preacher in our church years ago, and so 
he's a real whiner. He like whine. Mostly about money, just whine. He's a traveling minister, so he just whine all the time about money. So every time I'd see him, whine about money. So, so you know, I helped him on, on occasion. Don't mind doing that. But he kept whining. So I preached on faith one time. And so, boy, he said, whoo, he said, that's, that's one of the best sermons I ever heard. <laughs> I said, uh, did you enjoy that? He said, yep, and that's exactly what I believe. I said, but you know, the problem is, he didn't say you're going to have what you believe. He said, you're going to have what you say. So I want to know what you've been saying. Because if you don't get that whine out of your voice, it ain't going to be nothing but a sermon. Let's try this. I said, if you don't get that whine out of your voice, it ain't going to be nothing but a sermon or a song. But once you get the whine out of your voice, you say, that's the way I live and that's the way I talk and that is my language. That's what I speak. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and so the spirit of faith, I believe and I speak. And so there's nine. I'll just give you a few of them. You want them right now? Because my faith is in the power of God or my faith is in the ability of God. All right? What's the classic one? Ephesians 3.20. What's this say? Now unto him that is able to do what? Exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to his power that works in us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we're trusting in his ability yeah. and he's going to go beyond what you can ask or think. Yeah. He's able to do that. Yes. All right. You got another he's able? He, about Hebrews 7, 25. That Jesus as our intercessor he ever lives to make intercession for us, and he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. So now your faith is in the present day ministry of Jesus and in his ability. And he is able to save, that means to deliver, to heal, to restore, to bless you to the uttermost completeness. And he ever lives to make intercession and his ability now is working in your behalf and he's able to save, to heal when you come to God by him. All right, how about Romans 14, 4? What's that say? When you see somebody making mistakes and somebody messing up a lot, what does it say? When you see somebody, a believer, making mistakes, messing up a lot. So what does Romans 14, 4 say? Why are you judging your brother? He said, to his own master he stands or falls. And it says, and God is able to make him stand. Amen. Are y'all still here? So when you see somebody kind of not doing well, instead of you just criticizing me, he said, you say, well, they're, you know, they're not my servant, they're God's servant, and God is able to make them stand. So a lot of people you see really messing up right now, if you'll dare to just agree with God, you say, you know, I see they're having some challenges right now, but did you know God's able to make them stand, and he will make them stand. It might take a month, it might take a year, but my confession is God is able to make him stand. In other words, just not about my ability. Praise the Lord. So we have faith in the power of God, and there's nine he is able. You can find it in one of the books to make me stand, all right? Next, to have faith in the name of Jesus. I call this the other 316. Acts 316. How many of y'all know John 316? Good, it's Bible school. How many of y'all know John 316? Here's the other 316. Acts 3.16. What does that say? His name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. And the faith which is by him has given him perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So to have faith in God, faith in the power of God, and this is faith in the name of Jesus. His name, through faith in his name. And the faith that is by him has given him perfect soundness. Come on, you all just lay hands on your head every once in a while and just say, in the name of Jesus, I declare perfect soundness in my body and in my mind from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. In the name of Jesus. 
Come on, hold fast to that confession of faith. In the name of Jesus. All right, now go to Romans 3.25. Romans 3.25 says this phrase, which I love this phrase. Woo! Praise the Lord. Y'all know Romans 3.25? Here's what it says. Wow. Are you putting up on the board? Romans 3.25 in the King James Version. All right, well, I just want to look at this phrase. We have a propitiation through faith in his blood for the remission of sin. So there's a few words I want you to see there. Propitiation, and it says through faith in his blood, and it says for the remission of sin. He's talking primarily about righteousness in Romans 3.21, and he goes all the way to Romans 3.27 by the law of faith. Everybody say the law of faith. Law of faith. In other words, the kingdom of God operates by certain spiritual laws, and the law of faith is one of the laws that operate the kingdom of God. So even though you're under grace, you're still under these laws. People say, well, I'm not, I'm not under the law. Well, you're not under the law that makes you righteous because you're made righteous as a free gift, but there's still spiritual laws that govern what you receive from God. Y'all still with me here? All right, so... He says the law of faith, Romans 3, 27. Now go back to this phrase, through faith in his blood. All right, everybody say, I have faith, I have faith. in the name of Jesus and the power of God in the word of God. And I have faith in the blood of Jesus. All right, now to have faith in his blood, have faith in his blood. We have a propitiation. What's the word propitiation mean? That means we have been restored to favor and fellowship with God through faith in the blood of Jesus. We connected uh, with Pastors Mark and Trina Hankins a few years ago, and it was through our administrator at the time. She went to a meeting in Albuquerque, and she came back. Uh, with Mark Hankins material, Mark and Trina Hankins material, and uh, we feasted on those uh, teachings and recordings and books. It was a time where my wife and I, we were just trusting God to keep the doors open. It was a very challenging time for our church at that time. Uh, pastors Mark and Trina, uh, they did not know us uh, we did hear about them, but they did not know, know us. But the Lord put in pastors, Mark and Trina, to send material through our administrator to us for free. And it was a significant amount of material. Well, we read, we heard, and when they came the very first time to our church, after that meeting, a breakthrough occurred. And when that breakthrough occurred, now, you know, Ever since we partner, uh, we've been celebrating one breakthrough after another breakthrough after another breakthrough. And that connection, they pray for us, we lift them up in prayer, we sow, and as a result, there's an exchange. They give us material, and of course, the Bible College has been a tremendous blessing. But it has all happened because of partnership. Uh, we are partnering with a ministry that operates in the supernatural. And to be connected to a ministry that operates through the supernatural, that causes our church and ministry to operate in the supernatural as well. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Did you know the simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true? The moment you act on the Word of God, God makes Himself responsible for your results. The spirit of faith will ignite the call of God on your life. In this book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, you'll learn how believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. The spirit of faith opens the door to the supernatural, enables you to receive from God and fulfill your divine destiny. The moment you act on the word of God, God makes himself responsible for your results. The spirit of faith will ignite the call of God on your life. 
In the Spirit of Faith book, Mark Hankins shares valuable truths such as how to win the war of words. The simplest definition of faith is acting like the Bible is true. Faith is an act. Never run at your giant with your mouth shut. The Spirit of Faith is a pioneer spirit. It enables you to advance, break barriers, and go into new territory. The good news is, when you receive the Word of God, your faith can grow, and nothing is impossible. Lift your voice and open the door to the supernatural in any situation you're going through. When you order this special faith package, your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina Hankins train pastors around the world. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed that word on faith, holding fast to your confession of faith. I don't know about you, but I've been in a tough spot where I have been challenged in my faith and I'm wondering, okay, what am I gonna do right now? Am I gonna hold fast to what I believe and I know it's true from the Word of God and from what I have been taught, or am I going to listen to doctors or circumstances or whatever it is that may be screaming? And so I have been in that position and I know you may be in that position today too. So I encourage you to hold fast to your confession of faith. Listen to this message, listen to it over and over. And if you need more encouragement, I want you to get faith opens the door to the supernatural. This will help you to hold fast to your confession of faith. When you're feeling weary, when you're feeling like giving up, maybe circumstances aren't lining up with what you've been believing God for. I want you to keep holding on. When you've done all to stand, what are we supposed to do? Stand. You just keep standing. This teaching and this book will help you to do just that. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.